اوكي Okay, yeah, just before one small scripture. Um, um, from John chapter 3, um, just recently I was just sharing with a person, John chapter 3 verses 16 and 17, right? We know this verse. Um, so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the message of the Gospel, that by default, the world is already condemned. Okay, So, so this conversation that I had with this person was, um, he, was, he was in two minds. He was actually from a Hindu background, but um, more of an atheist, cultural, culturally Hindu, but then, you know, nothing to do with, the, not a practicing thing, but he had, he had been a practicing Muslim for some time. So very, you know, very complex uh, worldviews and beliefs and all that. But then this was the thing, you know, uh, in his mind, uh, this was it. Why is it that you put down uh, others? Why is it that you put down people who who hold to different worldviews um you know why is it that you put down so then you know, i was just sharing with them i said you know it is not that uh, the exclusive claims of jesus might be offensive um the thing is the moral laws of every worldview might be good you know the moral laws like okay you should do good to others you should um you know kind of not hurt others etc but then there is only one exclusive claim uh, in all this, which talks about eternal destiny, which talks about um, inner transformation, it talks about somebody who's dead coming back to life, like the spirit of the person. And the fact is that by default, the world is like this. Like by default, which means that from the beginning uh, or from the fall, it is like this. So therefore, Jesus is the solution, the answer, not to condemn, but to save. Okay. So I just want to share this, uh, saying that that when we share the gospel, right, when we uh, minister, that this should be the perspective. This should be the perspective that we are not condemning, but we are actually saying uh, this is the message of uh, this is a message of salvation. This is a message of hope. And the fact is that Jesus did not come to condemn, but actually to save, to set right what was already condemned. Okay. So many times we say, no, you know, if you don't, you're going to burn in hell because you have not received this. Yes, the fact is that the world is already condemned. The world is already heading towards that, right? But the message of the gospel is not to push further push people into condemnation, but to actually save. You know, that is something that we need to highlight and focus on, right? Okay. Yeah. Why don't we just pray, um, Father? We we thank you for the wonderful hope of the gospel like you've given us you've given the entire world Lord. and lord i pray that even as lord spokesperson of the gospel you have appointed us commissioned us lord to be preachers of the gospel communicators of the gospel and even as we do that lord lord enable us to highlight this enable us to focus on this that the world that is condemned already lord you did not con come to condemn it again but you came so that we might have life and life in its fullness lord i pray that we will be lord communicators of grace that we will be communicators of the truth we will be communicators of the love that you have for each and every person god and um, i pray that lord in each one of us that you'll make us soul winners that when we share the truth lord that people will come to know the truth and to the saving knowledge of Christ. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. So, teamwork, the last um, thing, the last lap, I think. Um, we've looked at eight, um, eight of those characteristics, right? Uh, eight of those things that we can actually develop in a person 
or build in a person or look for in a person in a team a team member right which is very very important very necessary okay we look at the ninth one the ninth characteristic is enthusiasm okay what does enthusiasm mean sorry interest somebody is interested somebody is energetic somebody is excited right in fact um, you know there's uh, there's a greek word it comes from the greek word entheos okay so entheos actually means in god to well the during the scriptural times people saw that the people who were in god or in christ were so enthusiastic so full of life right so they were entheos and then they said oh these people are enthusiastic and in theos they are in god so that's the that's the you know the the history behind that or part of it enthusiasm so as believers or as people who are working together in a team you know are we enthusiastic are we interested are we excited um because enthusiasm really gives it's like you know it, it's like uh, you know, plugging the team to a in a power socket right it gives so much of um, energy and strength to the team okay so when there is enthusiasm when there is excitement about a project then all other things are overlooked right all the things that are pulling us down or the challenges that are there will be very very in a cheerful manner they will be at people will be able to face it and therefore it be able to overcome but if there is lack of enthusiasm then what happens is that if even every small thing seems like a huge big mountain which is in front of us right, right? when there's no enthusiasm and there's no excitement right so like so so the question is okay how do i become enthusiastic about something right how do i become interested about something one main thing that causes us to be enthusiastic is to revisit the vision to answer the question why you know why am i doing this right to revisit the vision you know if you want to be enthusiastic about a particular subject you know just go and study more about it uh revisit the vision right um for example you know uh, about the call and purpose and so on right um i actually have a, a small book in which i've written all the you know all the prophetic words or that were the promises that i you know came across even as i was asking god seeking god for purpose and direction in my life and all the and all the supernatural things that happened right that god orchestrated in order to bring his word to me to my you know bring direction into my life it could be you know some dream some random person you know bringing his word and encouraging and so i've written it down so when i when i see that oh you know there is a there is some kind of a dip in the enthusiasm or excitement and in my life I just go back to it and review it and how god called me how god um confirm that call how god you know from time to time in various points in my life made sure that i received that message right to confirm okay you're on the you're on the right track you're going in the right you're in the going right direction how god used his people and used his word and uh, and supernatural things like dreams and so on to to confirm that i just go back and and read it and then i'm i'm charged again you know because when you go back to his word you are filled with faith right that's what happens right and so when you're filled with faith then automatically what flows out is enthusiasm right you're excited okay so revisit the purpose revisit the why okay and also second thing is to do things with a sense of urgency right suppose you have a project and you think oh i you know it's somewhere there 3 months down the line 4 months down the line i need to do it and and you feel that okay that your interest in is is going down do it with the sense of sense of urgency give yourself a deadline you say okay by the end of this week i want to finish this 
this part of it by the end of the next week i want to finish the next part of it right? you give we give ourselves some targets we give ourselves some uh, you know every target has to have uh, a submission date or a you know a, a deadline right and a time so when we give ourselves that okay by today end of today i want to be able to finish this then we know that okay i'm going to put in this effort and with that effort comes you know we, uh, comes back the interest and the energy to do this we be willing to do more you know if you if you go second mile maybe to teach someone maybe to help someone and also to you know do more about the project or about the task at hand right and strive for excellence you know when you do something well with excellence and when you're satisfied with the outcome you know that gives you even more interest and again you can feed that back in to do more right so enthusiasm build that in a team right so how would you build that you know this is something that we need to do for ourselves but if you want to see this in our team members again the same things but make sure that you know your team members have it right ask them talk to them uh, and encourage them in these things right when you give them okay we guys we need to do this we need to do this by the end of the day or we need to do finish this by tomorrow okay let's do whatever we need to do and and then you will see that there is a shift it's like shifting the gears in a vehicle right it must be going in fourth gear and maybe slowing down maybe but it will be like you know putting the third gear again and going a little further faster and then doing it better right okay so to be enthusiastic is very very important okay okay then the 10th one that we're seeing is to be intentional okay now when we say intentional we mean that there is deliberate action okay deliberate action okay many times what happens is we we sorry yeah so we are um, we just go with the flow okay if it happens it happens if it does not happen also it's okay you know that kind of an attitude right if it happens is fine we'll see otherwise it's okay you know and we somehow equate that as the will of god right we equate that and say okay if it happens it's the will of god if it does not happen it's it's the will of god so why should i fight it why should i you know work at something but then we need to be intentional about what we know to be true what we know that god has asked us to do okay we need to have deliberate action we need to take deliberate action which means we need to be taking diligent effort putting diligent effort and we need to be um, uh, intentional you know there are two things right <clears throat> how we do how we go about uh normally you know as believers uh, as disciples of the lord who want to minister who want to do good things right we are sincere in our beliefs one is by inspiration okay so what do we mean by that i mean okay god you know you i'm waiting for an idea i'm waiting for inspiration right i'm waiting for creative strategy i'm waiting for that once that hits once i receive that then i will do okay not a bad thing it's good because we are waiting on the lord to receive some you know some some inspiration something that the lord wants us to do okay but the thing is that we also have precepts and principles that are there in the word yes or no yeah you know there is the rema this is a quick end word but there is the logos the precepts the principles the written the ideas the heart of god everything is there right so sometimes we need to be you know doers of the precepts and principles you know not sometimes you know all the time but then you know when we are thinking of something that we need to do it we need to be deliberate and we can't just be waiting forever and ever for inspiration to come right there are things that we know to be true there are things that god has already laid down we take it up and we do it okay making sure that okay i'm not going against the will of god right god has del- all, all intention if god has spoken and god has said you know you wait then we wait but 
we don't have to uh, you know just um, be people without purpose or without deliberate action okay so being intentional is very important having deliberate action so which means we need to focus we need to have focus what is focus sorry to concentrate okay clarity okay focus is <clears throat> when we look at something to the exclusion of other things right like when you with your camera when you phone camera when you focus on something uh, you know you just tap the screen you are the, there are something other things that blur you know suppose you know like you are taking a let's say you go to a zoo or something and then there's a you know there are something in a cage right when you focus on what is inside the cage maybe it's a bird maybe it's an animal what happens to the bars or the it blurs right it goes out of focus but what is focus is what is inside so when we say focus we are saying that okay there are certain things that we look at intentionally we are focusing on we are concentrating on so means there are other things that we cannot give as much of concentration and effort there are other things which which blur away and that is you know natural or that is part of being focused right where we are putting effort we are looking at other things we are looking at something intentionally intently and there are other things which go out of focus now that is part and parcel of focus so when you are focusing on a task or focusing on some things that need to be done right now that is required right so being intentional means to have that focus to have that focus on a task to have that focus on a project okay so so we to ask ourselves you know do i do that with the task at hand you know or am i being distracted am i you know not giving that diligent effort to the task at hand right so focus focus and follow through what does follow through mean which means we carry it out till the very end we don't leave it at 25% 50% 75% but we carry through till the end that is follow through okay uh, because there will be time you know at 25% 50% 75% of the mile you know like a, if you look at a milestone there will be times when you feel that okay you know that effort is lagging maybe that interest is not there or maybe you feel that okay there is a challenge and maybe we should give it up right but as a team member or as a team leader we need to follow through to completion okay focus and follow through okay very important okay okay so what is required for us to be intentional you know, how can we do this um determine your strengths and limitations okay determine your strengths and limitations which means um you know have you heard of a swot analysis swot s w o t okay uh I just put it on the chat also um yeah uh, i mean this just a management um thing you know, exercise right swot which means uh, strength weakness opportunity and threat right strength s stands for strength um uh, w for weakness o for opportunity and threat so you you can do a analysis of uh, strength weakness or limitations what are the opportunities that which are there what are the challenges or threats that are there okay so which will help us okay these are my strengths and i'm going to use it if it's a limit limitation we can say okay these are areas where i need to build on these are things that i'm not good at yet right or these are areas which i'm which i'm totally the new to me i have not learned the skill so it's better that someone else does it second thing which will help us to be intentional is what we saw earlier in the first section to plan plan prioritize okay to have a calendar to have a to do list um and to have you know a lot of plenty of tools which are there which will enable us to prioritize what needs to be done in a day okay first half of the day 
what do you want to do second half of the day what do you want to do okay so these are things which are important we need to you know we need to do it um and again when we say plan and prioritize we're saying okay you know we, you involve god in it not to the exclusion of the leading of the holy spirit right okay then 80% of the time be focused on what brings the highest returns to the team okay what is it that i can do which which impacts the team which brings the highest return to the team which means what is it that we i can do contribute as a leader which enables the team to be highly productive 80% of the time be focused on that okay um so so some of the things that we need to do personally is to reflect you know do i do this personally do I, is this in my life is the team doing this what are some practical steps that i need to take okay so the intentional or uh, which means deliberate action working with a purpose right okay then the next one is similar to what we saw about the vision uh, be very aware of the big picture you know this is similar to um you know initial thing let me just look at it um, adaptable collaborative committed community uh, we looked at uh, that we, when we looked at the team you know that each team member needs to know what the score is right we, we saw that right uh, let me just go back um when you looked at the you know team 101 checklist that's the first thing that we saw the big picture okay what is the big picture and also we looked at the fifth one which is the score okay every team member needs to know where the team stands in terms of progress big picture score so this is similar to this okay it's it's a kind of an overlap but it's very important which means that um the team needs to be conscious of what the mission is right very aware and um, they are bought into it right they they do whatever is important to accomplish this um task so which means they are they are very mission conscious mission oriented okay so it's a one it's it's a wonderful thing to have a team which is very mi mission conscious Okay. they are aware of the task they say okay no wasting time let's go let's do let's do it you know if i if i come to the workplace if i come to the place or, or church or wherever you know this is what i need to do so immediately i start doing that you now get to do that right? so this what happens is when we are mission conscious we actually allow the leader to do the leading we free the leader to be who he or she needs to be Okay, otherwise we are becoming a hindrance right when we are very conscious of okay this is the mission this is the task we actually free the leader we don't hinder the leader we are not a hindrance to the leader okay the leader can lead leader can share ideas leader can give strategies direction otherwise we become a hindrance because the leader is focusing on okay these guys are not doing the job and you know all the effort goes into correction and and all that but if the team member if the team is mission conscious then we actually free the leader okay um then you know we need to do as team members whatever is necessary to achieve the mission okay to be mission conscious so uh, that's a simple part of it okay then um the next one is preparation okay again uh a very is uh, something to do with discipline something is um, you know uh, very connected to working intentionally which is preparation okay now is preparation necessary definitely preparation makes a big difference between winning and losing right preparation for the thing you know where we um set aside time to prepare to do the task well okay preparation could be setting aside time to think about what is necessary to be done preparation could be setting aside time to learn right um it depends on the context okay preparing being prepared as a team member when if you're if you're looking at a, a worship team every person if every person is well prepared then when the team meets for rehearsal it's a joy it's a pleasure 
right? Because we are just flowing together. All that we need to do is just talk about what is the direction that God is leading and how we will actually follow through. You know, we're not there to learn the song. We're not there to learn the music. We're not there, there to learn, hey, how do I play this? How do I play that? No, because you're already prepared before coming. Individual preparation before coming corporately. Okay. So any task, any, any project that you can think of, if the individual is prepared, if the individual team member has invested time in thinking about it, sometimes you know we come to the task without even having thought about it, right? Without even having given thought to what needs to be done, how do I do it? We just blindly rush into it. Okay. But if we give thought in order to prepare, if we give some time in order to learn, if we give some time in order to you know, exercise that skill, then there's a big difference. Okay. So John John C. Max says this, it is it is better to prepare than to repair. Like right? because if you don't prepare, then there's some kind of damage, some kind of you know setback. Then we go about repairing it, do about doing things in order to set it right. Right. So he also says preparation is battle half won. Okay. Or preparation is half fought. Battle half fought. Okay. There are things like assessment and alignment and attitude and action, which goes into preparation. Okay, so because you assess, okay, what is required, um, you come aligned to what is needed, then your attitude goes about a shift and change, right? Saying, okay, I need to learn this, I need to work on this, then there is action. Okay. So to prepare to improve this whole thing of being prepared for a task or a project. Um, what are some things that are helpful? Okay, what are some things that you can help in the team? Right, become a process thinker. Okay, which means you think about a particular task or a project from start to finish. Okay, from the start, from the beginning till the end. What is required for it? Okay, even before the part. You know, like for example, you know, some of you were in the 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 production the play and very complex right so many things part of it and uh, i was just observing you know being there observing what are the different things which go into it there are certain things which which are going behind the scenes right changing of mics changing of costumes changing of you know so many things which with every minute and the same things are happening here Right when the mics are being changed, the same the settings and everything, and uh, and then you know the the LEDs, what goes there, the words, the sound, the lighting, right? Everything. There's a, so many small, minute elements, but a lot of things are there. So many things, and and like I was talking to one person who used to be in theater and play and so on. So he was saying, you know, there are so, so many, so 10 things or 15 things or even more, but those need to come together, have to be done well, and those have to be come to, those have to come together in alignment each and every minute of the production in order for it to go well. If it's a live play, live production, you know, if it's a video, if it's a, you have the luxury of a retake. Right, say, oh, that didn't happen well, let's do it again. Right? Okay, cut. We won't use that. It's okay, fine, we can do this. Or if it's a recording also, you know, you're singing something, okay, oh, that person missed it. No. Here, everything has to happen correctly at the time. Only then it will be, you know, it'll it'll be it'll be received well, it'll be impactful. Okay. So he was saying, hey, everything actually came together. It's just the grace of God. So the thing is, for one, for a person to direct that, one has to be a process thinker. Think in terms of each process. Okay, sound, what is the process start to finish? Lights, what is the process start to finish? Right, script, what is the process start to finish? And for each and everything, you know, stage placement, for each scene, what is the process? So it's a very complex thing. But then we, we need to begin to start thinking like that. Right for for church for ministry for for the things that we are planning 
to be a process thinker okay, what are the elements which go into it right initially we might find it extremely difficult and think you know why should i right? it's it's too much of hard work right my mind is hurting my brain is hurting it is hurting you know but if you break it down if we get into the habit of thinking in that manner then you know we we will be better prepared right we will get into the details and uh, be well prepared so that we can be excellent in it okay like i remember the, the director right he came and said he just came and told me just a couple of days before that okay we are going to have these guys sing shouting out hosanna at this place okay and you start and then sing and as like initially i said hey, is there anyone else you know let them do it then even that small thing he was very very passionate and you know saying okay this is this is what you need to do you know and and the way he explained it i was i was i was really i said okay okay i'll do it he said jesus is coming he was, he was looking at us and he and he's telling us you know for three of us were there jesus is coming and you are the ones who are announcing that okay you are announcing it this is what you need to do you are announcing it jesus is coming the messiah is coming the king is coming you need to announce it okay and you need to do this and there will be this palm leaves you put it down and jesus will walk on it and the disciples will come and you need to do that and uh, yeah each one of you need to take play i mean you know take your positions and, and all that so and i was like oh okay okay i'll do it <laughs> but the thing is that the thinking behind it like he could have just said okay guys you stand there and you shout you just shout but he's just giving the context he's just saying this is it the scene gets over lazarus is resurrected and these announcers is going to jerusalem and and this is what it is right so when we start thinking in terms of process then we are better prepared okay so it and it's very contagious right so for, for me also okay i said okay i better tell the guys it was a simple thing but we practiced it they said simple thing but we were thinking you know I, I, okay i i sent one message to everyone saying okay guys uh, this is what it is this is the reporting time <laughs> it is a simple thing like right? just shouting hosanna but i said this is what this is the reporting time this is the time the the you know the palm leaves have to be put up and uh, this scene you we all need to get ready and these are the lines be ready with the lines and you are facing this side first i will go and the order and i send them the order okay i'm going to start this 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 is so everybody had the text and the thing so it's contagious what he started i said hey i i also need to do the same thing right i i better not miss out on the details so that we can be better prepared and there's no confusion okay so uh, it's very important to be a process thinker in order to be prepared research right find ways to improve there's always technology there's always new things there are always new learnings how we can improve the same thing right uh, it could be the same thing um, maybe certain things like you know projection like you're putting up songs okay how can i improve it right is there anything that will make it easier better um, people can see it better uh, is uh, what what are other churches doing uh, what are some churches which are using new technologies what are they doing can we do it right um and the third thing is to learn from the mistakes okay so mistakes are there mistakes are embarrassing uh, but we can always learn we can learn from it so that we don't have to do it again repeat those mistakes we can avoid those mistakes so when we when we prepare ourselves um preparation takes time okay preparation is like you know if you put an ice cube on a glass in a glass how much of is it seen outside 10% 20% the rest of it is floating inside you know you just try it out you know it's like an iceberg or a you know ice the rest of it is actually floating below the surface okay the same thing you know if it's a boat they have something called a the sink line so much of the boat is actually below the water the huge ship or a boat it's below the water right only so much is seen above the water below above the float line or the sink line so it is like that preparation is like what is below the water right there there could be 
you know so many so many so much of time that is spent in preparation but it shows in the result right and it's making us a better better person you know in terms of our character in terms of our attitude to every task that we take take up right we are learning okay we're not going into some situation unprepared right you're always prepared right okay any questions any thoughts okay so the challenge is always to inculcate this or to impart this to the team member okay, the challenge is all all these things that we are looking at no um the challenge is always how is it received can the team do it you know can the team member the members of the, the bigger the team you know there are always varying degrees of how it is received and how so so that is always the challenge right in order to impart you know so there needs to be repetition there needs to be modeling meaning leading by example they have to see it because if we just say it as a theory the question is oh you don't do it no i don't see it in your life i don't see it there i see something else in your life so it's the heart is not in it but if it's modeled if we as role models we lead by example show it in our lives and instruct this needs to be there you know then it is received well right and uh, we see that it is contagious we want to do it there's a want desire to do it because they see it and then they see it's effective right okay okay let's look at uh, the next four right um relational meaning do i get along with others okay if there is a strong relationship then there is a stronger team okay so it's talking about how we need to be communicative okay it's more than just communication okay uh, teams need people who are relational who get along with others and not you know overly sensitive um and uh, not able to get along with others you know that's always detrimental so we need to learn to get along with others so which means that we need to respect the teammate um you know when we have sh shared experiences with our teammates then that builds relationship okay we looked at it right shared experiences meaning certain things that the team gets to do together outside of work like right? outside of work maybe leisure uh, maybe something you know just having a cup of tea and talking and and uh, or doing other things maybe like sport or some games something shared experiences among the team over a period of time you know that builds relationship okay trust uh being other focused right we looked at all that then asking the right questions like what is the goal what is the desire what is the dream right ask the team members and listen right sometimes we'll find out that hey this person it not is not in the right place right they are there out of necessity or they maybe they need to be shifted maybe the some other task can be given and they can do it well okay so we need to ask we need to find out we need to try out right um okay spending team time outside official team setting that will also that will really help okay so being relational you know we we think that okay you know only when that the you know we need to be serious all the time and we need to be thinking about the task all the time or, or doing the task or doing the task all the time or doing the work all the time only then the team will be effective but actually if there is leisure or play or you know sports or games or whatever shared experiences outside of that actual work right you know suppose you are you are going to be leading teams you know sometime so this is something that you can think of you know okay the team is spending a lot you know that's very important very necessary right that the team is not uh Uh, the team needs to be focused and intentional and serious about the task at hand right that's very important because otherwise they could be playing throughout right so and and not really be serious about the job so being focused on the job at hand is very important but 
if you want to build a team if you want a team that is relational that will that is that will uh, you know so that the team can understand each other leading to more effectiveness and productivity that means that we need to think of time apart from the actual official work time or ministry time as well right so think about it okay what can i do how can i do this or maybe you're thinking oh, i'm not the guy to conduct these things maybe i'm not good at leading this find someone who's in the team who can actually do this right and let them do that so um, it will always help okay the next one self improving or growing when we grow when we improve ourselves the team improves okay um so which means that we need to look at a, a long term perspective when we need to grow okay if we need to grow okay learning new skills let it be a continuous thing okay uh, what is it that you're learning new every day but what is it that you set out to learn okay in the next 6 months i want to learn this thing okay. you take it as a project for yourself personal project i want to learn this i want to learn it could be anything it could be about you know it could be about you know like gardening or cooking or some skill or it could be anything but are you learning okay and also when it comes to the work at hand task at hand if that learning or skill is going to help okay so let it be like a long term thing and not be something that will fix the problem just then and not think about it the next day right so give it time think about it contemplation right? get a perspective on various things um we need to sometimes we need to pull away from the task at hand in order to learn okay um applying the learning is important okay so the, you know a, a, a simple thing to see how people change or why people change when people hurt enough then they change because they have to if they hurting i need to, hey, this is this is getting too much i can't handle it the pain is too much then they change right i need to get some help or i need some relief i need to go to the doctor i need to go to the you know when they are hurting then they change some people change only when it hurts when people learn more or learn enough they get information and experience it widens their perspective then they change they learn okay i was ignorant about this now i've got the knowledge i better change right people change that way third thing they receive strength and ability now they are able to change so change happens in all these ways right they hurt enough and then because of pain they change they let go of certain things they say i've had enough you know secondly they learn and they move from ignorance to knowledge then they change it changes their perspective now they say okay i want to change or they receive enough strength or wisdom or ability then they are now able to change and sometimes what happens is they're not able to change right they've not received that ability to change <clears throat> so they do that okay to become self improving be open to learning new things asking questions listening uh, have a learning be on a learning mode all the time like right? and plan for progress okay um it could be some area of learning now now actually there are so many avenues to learn right so many ways where we can learn um just the internet is so uh, of course we need to figure out what we need to do and there are so many things that we can learn and of course there is <clears throat> there is an aspect of time okay all this takes time right so you think about it okay in my season of life maybe right now i'm a single person i'm a student or maybe i'm a married person i'm a you know i'm a family member and and i have these responsibilities so in that season of life how much of time can i invest right to improve myself think about it right um okay the next one is selflessness so the team is a when we think of the team itself it's it's about togetherness it's about doing things together right so which means selflessness has to be part of the team okay if you're going to be like we looked at how you know 
like in a in a game like team sport like football or cricket or whatever if a person is going to be selfish they do want to think about their individual score and individual fame and individual records then that will not benefit the team right so they might you know do it and do it at the cost of the team not benefiting okay so we need to have the team always when we're working together uh, in at, at the at the forefront of things right so in order to be selfless we need to be generous how to kill selfishness be generous right avoid strife politics be loyal to the team okay value interdependence over independence okay this is something interdependence you know how can i collaborate you know we looked at that how can i collaborate with others how can i do this work how can i delegate so that others can also learn right so which means i'm interdependent right and not highly independent now for a, for example a person can be very highly skilled right? they can do 10 people's work they can do 10 different things they are highly skilled in all that they do it well so for such people it becomes a big challenge to be interdependent to work together as a team it becomes a big challenge you know i'll no i'll only do it i'll do it because you can't do it well or you're taking too much time right i'll i'll only do it so that that doesn't help the team right um or that doesn't help this whole quality of having selflessness um so we need to actually value interdependence okay um because what happens is when when it's interdependence the team learns there is also you know succession and what happens you okay you do everything in the team and then one day you let's say you move out or you go elsewhere then what happens to the team think about it what happens to the ministry what happens to the church right but if there are 10 other people who can do the work the way you do or you know the things that you do 10 others would do then there is succession like meaning it progress it continues on right okay so um so that's about uh, selflessness give secretly give generously take a subordinate role sometimes be part of the team empower others promote others move others so that they can also learn and they can also um do well right okay okay last two things i don't know if we'll have time for it okay one is being solution oriented and not just problem oriented everybody knows what the problem is sometimes we get into great detail to talk about the problem analyze the problem and we leave out the answer or the solution right yeah we need to know we need to know that there is a problem we need to know what is causing the problem but we also need to have or think about how can i arrive at the answer or how can i come to the solution which is necessary in order to solve the problem okay okay so next class we'll yeah probably look at the last two and then we will uh, and then we'll wind up okay so solution being solution oriented and being tenacious or being tough um we will look at it in the last class okay okay thank you god bless bye bye